Welcome to this week's episode of On Target. I'm your host, Alex Elaine. And in this particular episode, we will be going through a question and answer session. So I've collated some of the key questions that often come up when I get asked by other sales leaders. And so here's an opportunity to walk through my perspective. Let's dive right in. So the first question is, what are the biggest challenges facing SaaS sales leaders today? And how are you addressing them? Really, one of the biggest things is the fact that spending has generally reduced within the marketplace. We're seeing that customers are a lot more considerate about every pound or dollar that they're investing in a tool, a service, or a solution. So the need to be much more meticulous and dialed in when you're building out ROI equations has become more important than ever before. So really, that bigger challenge or trend, so to speak, is just the fact that customers aren't spending as much, maybe as frivolously as they were before. There was a period of time where winning deals was just a bit more fluid, spending was higher, budgets were higher, company fundings were increased, and we're just not in that situation at the moment. Although who knows, we may find ourselves coming out the other end of that soon enough. The next question is, how do you motivate and incentivize an increasingly distributed slash remote sales force? Ultimately, this comes down to having clarity of vision, having a big, bold, very clear vision that you can get your team excited and really get them behind. There's a lot of leaders and companies that don't really invest enough time into actually having a vision that you can leverage for hiring, leverage to motivate and encourage your team, and actually to give yourself clarity of vision so that you know where are we actually going, why are we heading in this direction, And what's the impact that we want to have on the world and for our customers? So the more time that is spent on that, the more effectively you'll be able to keep an engaged and an active team as well. The next question is, what SaaS sales metrics should leaders be tracking in 2024 and why? I would say first and foremost, sales conversion rate. So really understanding at what percentage are each of your team members able to take an interested customer and actually get them to be closed one. The reason for this is because a low conversion rate can indicate a certain area that that team member might need coaching in, for example. And so you can leverage that as a data point to figure out where do we need coaching and development? Is it at discovery phase? Is it a differentiation stage, a proposal and planning stage? And then again, leverage that for coaching and enablement. Another metric would be average sales price. It's something that you can change very quickly and easily and actually generate a significant amount in uh, annual recurring revenue or monthly recurring revenue if you're able to increase your average sales price. Again, quick and easy fix if you needed to to fill a bit of a hole in a void or if you're able to add some more value to a client and then by virtue of doing that, increase your ASP. And third, I would say retention metrics, really gross retention rate. You can't grow a business with a leaky bucket, i.e. if you're winning a customer, but then losing a customer every month, you haven't got a business that's primed for growth. And so really leaning into all of your retention metrics and understanding exactly what it takes to retain a customer over an extended period of time is more important than ever before. Next question, how has the sales process for SaaS products evolved over the past five years and how should sales leaders adapt? I would say that, again, it comes back to something I mentioned earlier. It's really the fact that because customers are more ROI centric, in other words, they're looking at every penny and wanting to make sure they get a true return on investment. The way that salespeople are having to go to market and sales leaders are having to train and encourage their teams is to have that in mind. So when you're building out a proposal, really leaning into the data and unpacking not you know all of the latest, greatest features of your product, service, or solution, but how do they specifically translate to quantifiable outcomes that you can leverage within a sales cycle to drive some form of transformative difference? Next question, what responsibilities do sales leaders have when it comes to supporting customer success and retention. This is something I learned from my time at AWS, Amazon Web Services, which is the fact that their number one leadership principle is customer obsession. And there's really no other way out of this, which is when you truly obsess over a customer, that always puts you in a position where you're going to have happier customers, i.e. customer success, and better retention with the customers that you have. So what I would say is always put yourself in the shoes of your customer, understand what's important to them, How does your product, service or solution drive transformative difference for them? 
and really obsess over their success every single day. And you'll never really have to worry about that metric too, too much. Next question. In a competitive hiring market, what strategies are you using to attract and retain top SaaS sales talent? What I'd really say here is that you need to actually have a criteria and have hiring criteria that fits in line with your vision. In many cases, I'm speaking to founders and company owners, and they don't actually have criteria for their hires, and they don't have a criteria that fits in line with the DNA and the vision that they have as a business. And so if you don't have that, it's very difficult to hire and to attract top talent because you don't even have clarity yourself on actually what it takes to attract and retain talent. So have criteria, stick with it, and make sure that it fits in line with your company norms and the way that you think, act, and operate as a business. Next question, how are you leveraging AI, big data, and automation to augment the productivity of sales teams? Well, I primarily leverage the AI for admin, administrative-based tasks. What you want to think about is if you've got a task that is high in time intensity, but low impact, that's the type of task that you want to leverage AI for. So capturing meeting notes, doing any kind of admin work that is not necessarily high impact for your business, but it's what it is high impact for your business, whether it's high impact or low impact, it, it doesn't really matter. It's more about the time intensity. So what I'm also meant is if it's taking up a lot of time, for example, you want to be in a position where you can automate that. And AI is a fantastic tool and great evolution in our marketplace to really start to move away those tasks that take up a lot of time, but still have some form of importance to your team or to your business. Next question, which SaaS industry and verticals and micro verticals represent the biggest growth opportunities this year? Well, it's got to be AI, as we just mentioned, artificial intelligence is taking the world by storm. No different to when the internet first arrived and that was completely transformative to the world. AI is no different. It's going to absolutely transform the working world as we know it. And the other component I would say is any business that's focused around automation, people are really dialed into productivity, to time saving, to really re reducing manual overhead. So any tool that is supportive of automating processes, we're starting to see a great rise for those types of businesses at the moment. Next question, as economic headwinds persist, how are you adjusting SaaS sales strategies and projections? Comes back to what I mentioned about over-delivering for customers and really obsessing for them. It's not enough to just do the status quo, to just meet the same bar of expectation that all of your competitors have. You've got to over-deliver. You've got to have an offer that is so great that customers just can't help but want to know more. And then when you actually get to engage with them, You've really got to focus on over-delivering, providing so much more value than you were able to potentially give that customer thought that they may receive at the beginning. And when you over-deliver, that's really how you build and generate customers for life and also maximize your retention metrics at the same time. And final question, what leadership qualities distinguish the top performing SaaS sales leaders you've worked with or observed? I'd really say that they have, first of all, massive visions for what they want to do and where they want to take their team and their business. And then they're just relentless. They're completely obsessed with actually bringing that vision to life. It's so easy to have a vision and then to give up at the first hurdle. It's a completely different ballgame to have that vision and then to press forward every single day and to be completely maniacal and focused and relentless about actually going out and achieving that on a day-to-day -day basis. So what I would say is that they really have those types of qualities. They're focused on having a huge, huge vision. And then they're absolutely relentless about bringing that vision to life. I hope that this has been helpful in some way. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.